In this video, we're going to learn how to count the occurrences of a value in an array using recursion in C. So the first thing we'll do is declare an int array called array, which will initialize with the values 1, 3, 4, 3, and 5. So the value 3 occurs twice in this array. What we want to do is count the occurrences of this value using recursion. So to use recursion means to create a function which calls itself to solve this problem. We call that function a recursive function. We'll declare the function up here. The function is going to return the number of occurrences of a value in the array, so the function will have an int return type. Then we'll call the function count occurrences. The function is going to be passed the array itself as an argument, so we'll have int array for the first parameter. And when the function is initially called, it's going to be passed the length of the array as an argument, so we'll have int n for that parameter here. Then we'll have int value for the value that we're going to count the occurrences of in the array. We'll copy this and supply a definition of the function down here. And just to be clear, when the function is first called, we'll call it like this. We'll call count occurrences and we'll pass it our array. We'll pass it the length of the array, which in this case is five because we have five elements in the array. And we'll also pass it the value that we're going to count the occurrences of in the array, which in this case is three. So this function is going to return the number of occurrences of the value three in this array of length five. We'll store that number of occurrences into an int variable called occurrences. So the way a recursive function will typically work to solve a problem is by solving part of the problem each time it's called and then calling itself with a smaller version of the same problem to be solved. And that's exactly how this function is going to work. So each element in this array is stored at an index. For example, one here is stored at the index zero, three is stored at the index one, and so on for the rest of the elements in this array. Now we know that when the function is first called, it's going to be passed the length of the array as the second argument here, which means n is going to be set to the length of the array. That means the last element in the array is going to be stored at the index n minus one, which in this case here is four. So what we'll do is use that fact to check to see if that element, the last element in the array, is the value that we're looking for. If it is, we found one occurrence of the value in the array. So we'll do that. Down here we'll have if in the array at the index n minus one, we have the value that we're looking for, we found one occurrence of that value in the array. So we're going to return one plus because we found one occurrence of the value in the array and what we need to add to one is the number of occurrences of the value in the remaining portion of the array. Now to find the number of occurrences of the value in the remaining portion of the array, we're going to call count occurrences again. So we'll call count occurrences again. And again, we're going to pass it the array, but this time we're going to pass it n minus one and the value. And so I'll explain this more, but what we're doing here is using n to go through each index in the array from the end of the array to the start of the array. And each time we're checking to see if the value that we're looking for occurs at the index n minus one. And if it does, we're adding one to this count. Now we do have to handle the case that the value does not occur at the index n minus one. So we'll have an else branch for that. We'll have here else. And in this case, because the value doesn't occur at the index n minus one, we could return zero plus and then call count occurrences. So we'll have count occurrences. And again, we're going to pass it the array and n minus one and the value to count the occurrences of this value in the remaining portion of the array. And this time here, we're adding zero to that count because we didn't find an occurrence of the value in the array. Now, the thing is, we don't really need this zero plus here because adding zero to any number is just going to give us that number back. So instead, we're just going to return the count of the occurrences of that value in the remaining portion of the array. So again, the way this is working is basically using n to go through each element in the array. Because the first time the function is called, we know that n minus one is going to be at this index here, the last index in the array. And we'll check to see if the value that we're looking for occurs at the index n minus one. In this case here, it doesn't because we're looking for three and we have five. So in this case here, we're just going to return the count of the number of occurrences of the value 
in the remaining portion of the array. So when the function is called again, it's going to be called with m minus one. That means for the second function call here, we're going to have m minus one be at this index here. And this time we'll check to see if the value occurs at this index. And this time it does. So for this function call here, we're going to return one plus the count of the occurrences of the value in the remaining portion of the array. So we'll have one plus that remaining count. And it's going to proceed like this. So n minus one is going to be here with the next function call. And then n minus one is going to be here with the next function call. And that function call will add another one plus here. Now, eventually we do need this recursion to stop. So we'll have the function stop calling itself once n minus one goes beyond the start of the array, which is going to be the case if n is less than or equal to zero. So we'll check for that. If n is less than or equal to zero, in that case, what we'll do is just return zero. And we'll turn this into an else branch. So in this case that n is less than or equal to zero, that means we've gone beyond the start of the array and we'll just return zero, which is going to have no effect on the count here. So we're going to end up returning two in this case. And this summation is going to occur across a series of function calls as each function call adds either one or nothing to the count of the occurrences of the value in the remaining portion of the array. Now we call this case here where the function stops calling itself a base case or a base step. We call these cases here where the function calls itself again recursive cases or recursive steps. Now let's finish testing our function out. Up here, let's output the return value. We'll have printf and we'll output occurrences. And then we'll have percent %d to output an integer value, followed by backslash n for a new line. And we'll output the returned occurrences here. And if we save compile and run the program, we're going to get here that we have two occurrences of the value three in the array, which is correct. So this is how we can count the number of occurrences of a value in an array using recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.